obviously playing rugby, you get off players, you get off fans, you get off players and fans anyway for just playing. So yeah, yeah. definitely for being gay, you get it for being fat, you get it for being you know whatever. Yeah. Uh, so you're definitely going to get it for being gay. But I suppose now I've come to terms with it, I've got my head around it. Being you know if someone's calling someone gay is like calling someone fat. Yeah. You are what you are what you are. Yeah. So it's. I didn't have the courage to tell her because I didn't want her to think that I'd led her along for eight years. Because yeah. that was not the case. Well, the day I married her, I thought I was going to be with her for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I loved her. That was, you know, I was marrying her. I was happy. You know, I was glad I was marrying her. Yeah. But, you know, as, t as time went on and I suppose I kind of came to terms with it, then that wasn't that. I, I had to t I had to tell her. I went down to her house and uh, just asked if I could have a word with her. Um, and my stomach was in knots. And I, I we sat down at, at the table, and she was on on one side, and I was on the other, like diagonal across from each other, mm. chit chatting. Like kitchen about, table type thing. Yeah, right? yeah, just talking about, well, nothing really. Mm. And I said, I, there's something I need to tell you. Um, and I couldn't get the words out. It stuck in my, in my throat. I felt sick. And I said it. I said to him, yeah, you know, I said, I know you've been beating yourself up and but it, that's not fair, don't beat yourself up, it's not your fault. Yeah, it's been better. It's, I, people have asked me if it feels like there's a weight off his shoulders. Yeah. And I, I don't, I don't know, maybe a bit, because there was always, it was like a dark cloud, it was like dread that would follow you around because the worst thing in the world that could happen to me was somebody found out. If, and if somebody found out, the world would end for me. Mm. That's what I thought. And I suppose now, it's you feel you kind of feel like it, you felt like someone had something over you all the time, even though nobody knew. If somebody did know, that'd be it. Whereas now, no one's got anything over me. I don't feel. I don't feel like I'm looking over my shoulder all the time, or I'm. I'm just, I don't have to do that now, no, which yeah. is nice. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they, they were, yeah, I mean, it was, they said, do you want us to tell anybody? Yeah. And I said, I, I said, don't broadcast it, you don't have to walk around with a sign, yeah. but if anybody asks, don't lie. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, like anything in rugby league, once there's any, a bit of gossip, everybody knows. So it was, <laughs> which wasn't a problem. I mean, but it went round like wildfire, yeah. um, which I suppose made my life a bit easier because yeah. it's it can be hard work telling people. Yeah, constantly tell people. Because yeah. every it was every time you tell someone, it's emotional. Yeah. Or it, you know whether it's good emotions, bad emotions. There's a lot, you know. It, it, Kind of takes it out of you a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, so it was. It made it a little bit easier, I suppose. And then you get people. I I got lads ringing me who I played with for for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I got lads ringing me who don't play anymore. And my captain ring me from um, when I was at Jewsbury years ago. Mm -hmm. Ring me up to say, see how I was, see how I was how everything was going. That it's still. You know, I felt exactly the same about me. Nothing changed. Yeah. So I got a lot. I got a lot of rugby lads doing that, which was a nice touch. Yeah. The club, the chairman, rung me up. Yeah. The coach, yeah, uh, told my coach, and he, you know, he was really supportive.